Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Game of the Year by Nice Games Publishing. In Game of the Year, you and up to three other players will be competing to build the Game of the Year. You will be software slash game engineers, and you will be utilizing your dice to basically create software. Uh, you're gonna be making themes and genres uh, to go up against rival game designers. You'll have three rounds to complete your best game, and hopefully that game will become Game of the Year. It has a solo mode, has a competitive mode, and a cooperative mode where you'll work together with other software slash game developers to create your game of the year uh, by beating out the ultra mega boss. <laughs> There's a ton of different bosses in the game. Uh, we'll go ahead and show you the game on Tabletop Simulator. I'll run you through how the game is played and what it looks like and what you're going to be getting when you pick it up on Kickstarter. And then of course I'll give you my review for the game after playing it on Tabletop Simulator and a link will be available in the description where you can pick up game of the year if you'd like to be the number one game developer of the year. Okay, let's go down below and I'll show you. So here we have the game, Game of the Year. And currently I've set it up for, I guess, two players here. And the base number of players is going to be a different setup. But I'm going to go over the basic idea of the game, how you play, and the setup. And the first thing you'll need to know is that there's going to be this board over here. This board is kind of like a skill tree board. And basically you'll be starting off by putting these tokens on the board. And then you'll be flipping these guys over. And throughout the game, you'll be able to purchase these guys based on their values. Uh, the lower ones will cost one coin or one dollar, and then it'll be two and then three, and dollars will count for millions because you're making games. And make sure that this board is filled up. Eventually, you'll see some stuff pop up, and when that happens, um, you'll have to purchase them for their costs. Uh, now, if, for instance, if I purchase this two tech here, uh, basically what happens is you'll check above it, and if the space below it, or both spaces, or all spaces below it are open, you'll flip them over. So in this case here, this guy, it has still got one of these arrows with a token on it, but this one doesn't, so you would flip that over, and now that's available for purchase. And that's basically how the tech trees work. Uh, this area over here is the different development rounds and the rivals you'll be facing with. You'll start with the easy ones, medium ones, harder ones, and your ultimate goal is to defeat the boss or become game of the year by having a higher value game than this specific one here. Diablo, the friendship RPG. There's also some rewards uh, that you'll be able to get as you defeat your rivals. And depending on the number of players in the game, will be how many rivals you start with. In this case, I believe it's X plus one. So in a two-player game, you'll have three rivals come out from the first one here. It'll tell you what you get when you defeat the rival, how many stars you need in order to beat in order to defeat the rival. Over here is going to be your features and themes. Features and themes are pretty straightforward. You'll produce features and put them out onto the um, playing area, which players can gather. And the themes are as well placed out. Every player is going to get a player board. I've already gathered my player board. I've got my currency. I've got my tech. Tech is basically kind of like a wild that you can use, but it doesn't give you stars. And you need stars in order to make the game uh, to beat your rival. Now over here is kind of a nice little scheduling area. It tells you which games you have, the three different games that you're going to be making, the type of boss that you're going to be fighting, and then, of course, your victory points, trying to get game of the year. You can put your company name, like I did, and, of course, the founder name, and then you'll begin the game. The first thing you'll do is look at this board over here, and it tells you, okay, this first round here, you've got the development plan, which is competition. You put all your stuff out. Then you move to the pitching phase. Pitching phase is pretty simple. You go back and forth gathering themes, gathering genres and features. Uh, you're going to start with a certain number of genres in your hand and you can select them and based on the genre that you select will be the type of competition or rival you'll be facing. So if I wanted to fight, let's say this guy here, Surreal Competition. I can put that out. That's the name of the game I want to fight. I have to find the card with the same icon as that one, this one here, and place it out. And that would be my turn for the specific pitching phase. So I chose my rival. Now I pass and the next player will get to choose their rival. Other things you can do is you can choose to gather a feature and then of course your opponent will be able to do the same it'll go back to your turn and you can choose to gather another feature maybe a theme and eventually what's going to happen is you're going to pass after your board gets completed uh, this will look like a fully completed board however you can unlock more areas as you gain hype uh, during either the first round of the game um, or as you beat your competition you can move up or down in hype level and for every level that you move up in the orange and the red it'll unlock these feature and theme spaces here provided for you which will allow you to gain more stars because after you finish pitching or your drafting phase you'll move on to the development phase and the way that works is you'll be rolling sets of die based on the number of players and you'll roll them separately uh, let's see if i can do this 
uh, these guys, and you'll roll them, and you'll roll these, and then you'll select between separate sets of die, utilizing their icons to fill spaces on your board. So for instance, if I chose this set here, the blue and the orange, I could then fill in the spaces on my board here with stars. So the orange here I can fill in like just like that. And of course I can do the same thing for the blue. And you're trying to go from left to right all the way across to fill these guys in with stars. If you put in the wrong type of icon or you can't, you might end up with bugs which will cost you negative points on the card that you're filling. And if you have something like a tech, like this guy here, you can place that in as well. And that's gonna count as uh, zero points. Negative one, zero and one would equate to this card being finished but you get zero points for it, and you need to get higher stars than your competition by the third development phase. Every development phase is you roll the dice, and then you select the pair of dice that you want, and you utilize that pair to fill in the bubbles on your board here. Now, of course, there's also your benefit of providing yourself with your specific genre, and you'll get a benefit like, for instance, this one says whenever you use a you know, side like this, you can, use, you can gain a tech. And of course, once you've passed, meaning you can no longer do anything, um, of course, after the three development phases, you have nothing else that you choose to do, then you're going to score. And you'll score all of the components of your theme, of your features, um, and of course, of your genre. You'll gain any benefits or rewards based on the top of your board here. If you finish a red card, you know, you'll get one extra star per red card. And these cards are all labeled in the top left-hand corner with different types you can have. And the same was said for blue, yellow, uh, purple, orange, and green. They all provide some type of benefit. Some of them can be used multiple times, and uh, other times it's just only once and as long as you include it. And then after you've gone through the three dev phases, you're then going to attempt to release your game, and you're going to clean up, get rid of all this stuff, put this card back into your hand, and start again. Um, and of course, you'll have a new rivals will come out based on the different areas of the different rounds, these guys here, up until the point where hopefully you're able to defeat the main boss of the game. There's multiple different bosses. This one here is just an example boss of the game. But your objective is, of course, is to beat your competition, gather the rewards provided on the card, provided that you have more stars on on your area here than against your opponent and move on three times thusly having the most stars in one of your games uh, over the main baddie here to basically have the game of the year because you're trying to create the game of the year and your rivals and of course the main game are something you're going to have to deal with uh, throughout the entire thing and you can do that by not only drafting dice but gathering these tokens here in this type of skill tech type tree and as well as filling these guys in by completing them and kind of moving along in like a roguelike right or like simulation of of game development and that's basically the idea of the game game of the year now for my review so game of the year is pretty straightforward you'll be flipping over certain cards will allow you to build certain portions of a game you'll be naming the game you'll be naming your company and you'll be going up against your your, your competitors which could be your uh, people that you're playing with or of course the game itself and uh, your objective mainly is just to make the best game possible in three rounds if you can accomplish that you'll win the game however other players are going to work either with you to do so or against you and how that works is you'll be flipping over the dice and you'll be selecting dice and utilizing those to create your themes and your mechanics. You could be building a game that's like a, a shoot 'em up game that you util just utilizes waste disposal, disposal and multiplayer variants. Uh, another one could be a battle royale game or maybe a MOBA or perhaps something like a roguelike. And you kind of have to make your own game and the games will depend on their values and the values can either become uh, bugged or they can give you stars, which is what you need for game of the year, which is how you get victory points, how you get hype and all that. And how you defeat your rivals or of course you can just fail to make them completely and if that happens well you're in in trouble uh, but luckily you get multiple rounds to do so and as the rounds progress you get better you start making a brand new game but if you have more hype you'll be able to make more themes and genres and whatnot for your game which thusly will give you higher star values which will be able to then allow you to beat the main big daddy boss at the end of the game uh, it, it's got a bit of a luck basis where you are rolling the dice and then you have that ability to select certain tokens that will allow you to kind of get a boost or a bonus whether in this round or the next round and then of course you have the ability uh, to select the different portions of your game that can hopefully make you have a better opportunity to get those stars you need but if you pick too many and don't have a way of actually getting those tokens and placing them on your board you're going to be uh, out of luck. Uh, my suggestion of course is to start small and build up to the best game the game of the year. You technically could get game of the year in the, probably the second round and I guess it's possible
possible in the first, but I don't know how. Um, but you basically uh, will want to build up and maintain a solid baseline for your company and slowly utilize your bonuses to allow you to get the currency by beating small rivals to then come up and fight that big main baddie, that big boss rival. And uh, you can do it either cooperatively or competitively. And of course, there's the solo mode as well. A couple of the things that I think they need to fix, and I think that they've already, they've already spoken about it, is like some of the uh, numbers. The game's rather challenging. I think it could be reduced a little bit, especially for players that you know, want a more gateway style game. Um, and of course, I like the idea of taking the tokens and utilizing them as bonuses, but I want to see extra die in the game in a way that makes it fair at each and every time so that extra die are going to come as you're starting to draft them. Uh, making your own game is excellent. It's a really cool theme that I haven't seen before. I have always wanted to develop my own game, and this is kind of a small board game that allows me to kind of feel like I am doing so while still working in the theme of playing a game where you're rolling the dice and gathering what you need and utilizing those dice to fill certain roles. If you like games like King of Tokyo, uh, if you like games that involve that solitaire style die selection with unique little twists of not only game development and selecting certain pieces to create your own game, but also the added benefit of like a skill tech tree that you can kind of gather additional bonuses from, this is going to be one I would highly suggest you take a look at. I had a lot of fun with this game, and if you don't mind a die roller, you don't mind one that's got a little bit of a luck basis, of course, and of course the fact that you have to select the best components, and if you go overboard, you're going to fail, and if you go uh, too under, you're going to not succeed as well, so you kind of have to balance your choices in the game, along with, of course, getting what you need in order to succeed. Solid game, though. Take a look down below. It'll be a link in the description where you can pick the game up on Kickstarter Game of the Year if you're interested in picking it up. So far, all of the games that I've seen before have been really solid looking games, really beautiful thematic games, and this one is no different. <laughs> Link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Game of the Year by Nice Games Publishing. If you're interested in picking up the game, like I said before, you know where to go. You can also go ahead and subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button where you can go ahead and see more of our videos just like this one live stream every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. Every week, you can join us and see what's going on in the gaming world. You can also go ahead and join us on our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and subscribe or join us on Patreon for a buck a month. It helps us produce more games and keep us rolling here, keep the lights on, so it's all appreciated. Even a single dollar helps us out tremendously. Appreciate you guys' support, and as always, I look forward to creating the best game of the year with you next time.